Kyle. Yeah. And then Chef Kyle and Matt were like, okay, we're going to open. Uh, so I went and I was on the opening team of Single Thread. Dope. Yeah. Uh, Justin McMillan. Yeah, Chef. Yeah. Ploy. Did you work with Ploy? Ploy, no. No? I, I sat with her at the catbird seat and she was like, oh yeah, I worked with with uh, at Single Thread. It might have been after you left. How yeah, long were you there? I was there for just about two years. Okay. Um, Wait a minute. And I'm sorry, a year and a half. You must have worked with her. That's no, crazy. No, I didn't work Never with mind. her. Yeah, it was like opening team. Like we were like carrying bricks. <laughs> like Yeah, yeah. Like really opening. Yeah. And that was, that was a really amazing restaurant. Oh, I mean, it is an amazing restaurant. I'm sorry. My time there was amazing. Yeah. It still is an amazing restaurant. Um, it was... Some of the things there that I saw were just like, blew my mind. Yeah. Uh, here's a perfect example. It was opening night, and we have a, a combi oven, or, or I'm sorry, a CVAP, yeah. where we cook these chawan mushis, these little egg custards. And it's like 5.15, and our CVAP breaks. And I'm like, holy shit. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Yeah. Like, we're so fucked. And Kyle's like, bro, I invented it. I that's yeah <laughs> yeah it's, it's like me and heston invented this dead scenario. ass <laughs> chef kyle plops on the floor sits his, sits his butt on the floor and starts playing with it or not playing with it starts fixing it. and i've never seen this in my life yeah. i was like chef what are you doing yeah i don't know why i would like yeah like, why like, would you ever yeah ask him that but i was but just, he's he's got that demeanor that you can ask him those questions absolutely and you can't say hey chef i forgot to order the grapefruits yeah yeah we got them from the tree exactly you know so, so like it was insane. What up, Rumi? How you doing? So, um, so yeah. And I was like, Chef, how do you know how to fix a CVAP? And he's like, Cause I invented it. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, Oh my god! And I knew like everything was different. Like, like shut the uh, fuck up, Dave. Don't yeah. ask any more questions. Yeah. Like you don't know anything. Yeah. Like oh, oh yes, Chef. I'm it's sorry. Like, Blow, have you ever heard of Heston? Yeah, that's my boy. Like yeah, yeah. Oh my I got god. This like, like we invented this. There bro. are so many times. Like I made a joke about like, have you ever? been to like omen like yeah the country and he's like yeah of course like we went and we found a camel and like, yeah i was like what are you talking Dude, about I, like, he is the truest punk rock chef i've ever like not that he was into music earlier i know that that's where they met i believe they met at a punk rock he was concert, super into punk him rock. and his wife yeah, yeah, yeah and uh he just has that lifestyle about him he's, he's just like just some people you meet are just like, yeah oh you're just absolutely brilliant throughout all the all the time that it took to open single thread yeah anytime you looked at him or because he'd come into dinner all the time never phased yeah never like oh no my restaurant's not opening it was always like yeah it's take a, there was never any months. yelling yeah. at my time at single thread except for the except, hey! yeah yeah <laughs> no no there was one time he yelled okay it was opening night, and he, inv- of course, he invented this stove. <laughs> so, you know, like, almost like if you ever, like, seen a wok. Yeah. Like, when you're working in a wok station, there's, like, water underneath it. Yes. So, yep. if, like, you make a mess, it kind of, like, washes off because it's such high heat, things will burn on. Yeah, yeah. So, we applied that to a, a range or, like, a burner system because we cooked in these clay pots, these donabe. Yeah, yeah. And so... It's a lot of over... You know, you can see, stuff. you know, it's yeah, bound yeah. to happen. Just yeah, cooking. yeah, of course. You I mean it's enclosed. So he had a water bath underneath it, so it was easy cleanup. But all it required is putting water in it. Yeah. And it's opening night, and there, you know, nobody was used to filling our stove with water. Yeah. yeah. So everybody forgot. And he looks at it, and he's like, "Why is there no water in this? I told everyone to put water in this. I didn't put water in this. I should have told it." I messed up. And he starts yelling and saying how he made Like yelling at himself? At himself, at a, the mistake he made and how he felt bad, how he should have done better and how he should have communicated yeah. this better. And I was like, holy shit. <laughs> like you don't often see a sh- like a chef take accountability and like yelling yeah. an apology about how he needs to hold himself to a higher standard. And I was like, wow, that is, you know, you, that's like a clapping kind of moment. Not that he wants to hear that. Yeah. Uh, but it's like. Damn, chef, that was fucking badass. Yeah, but that to was, this day, you remember that. You better believe it. And that's it. fucking, that's incredible. Absolutely. You know? And, I mean, and then it's the combination of, like, just his brilliance and also with Katina's, like, unbelievable kindness. Just, like, I've never met someone who's, like, six in the morning, the warmest welcome you've ever yeah, seen right. in your life. Like, aren't you tired? Aren't you sh-? And just, like... Just like so many like 
it just like felt so good to be around her because she's just this kind, gentle, smart, just incredibly talented person. Yeah. The, 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 the combination between the two of them is just like, wow, just unbelievable. And then learning about the incredible tradition of Japanese cuisine. Not that Single Thread is a Japanese restaurant, but of course, Chef Kyle is deeply influenced yeah. by Japan. And so the, the, the food that we would make was influenced and learning about these incredible traditions of uh, kaiseki and, and donabe cooking. Um, and then I worked pastry station, so learning about uh, some of the dessert traditions were just like super eye-opening. And yeah. everything that you think is wrong like, you know, like a simple thing is like when you're taught to hold a knife, you're never taught to like put your finger out. Yeah. Because that's like bad technique. Yeah. And then he's like, you only keep your finger out. Yeah. Knife. He's like, yeah, we do that. That's always what you do. I learned that from Chef Cat. Right? Like, because when I got there, I was like, I made, I think I made like a dumb joke. I was like, oh, you're not supposed to do that. And she kind of gave me the death stare. And I was like, yeah. Like, but then every time I'd watch her, I'm like, oh, her meat is straight every time. Of course. You know, it's not an angle. It's not this and not that. It's like, Fucking use your finger. Yeah, you know? exactly. All the things that like I never thought <clears throat> were like you know we spent all this time making veal stock at other restaurants, and now you're making like dashi that takes like forty five minutes to make and is like so delicate. It is amazing. Everything is just delicate and gentle and uh, very soft and subtle and yeah. amazing. Yeah, absolutely amazing. But like just a very different way of cooking that how I was used to. Um, you know, very low in fat and like not very heavy and very gentle and it really was very eye-opening for sure dope super cool so you stayed there for two years you worked yeah. all the stations i'm guessing no no i was a, i was a pastry cdp oh got you got you so you just stayed on pastry the whole time man the pastries there what, what was that like it was really interesting because we were we're not a japanese restaurant but we're trying to like be influenced yeah by Japan, the influences there. but also we're influenced you know like the in my mind, Kyle, Chef Kyle's influence is modernist cuisine because he was incredibly important in the fat duck. Yes. So I have all this future, then like all these ancient old traditions of clay pot cooking yeah. of Japan, and then the, the farm. So like how do you influence and play with those three? And like traditionally in Kaiseki cuisine, uh, when you're eating dessert, it's like sometimes it's just like a perfect piece of fruit. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, oh, okay, we're going to do a little bit more than that. How do you how do you do that? How do you get involved with that? And uh, Matt and the executive uh, chef cuisine, Aaron and Chef Kyle, and uh, all the people, we kind of figured out how do you kind of figure that out. So we had a pre dessert, a main dessert, and uh, we called it wagashi, which are these like little uh, thing, little bites or little sweets that you eat at the end, yeah. which are kind of different in traditional Japanese cuisine, but. It was a, like a Californian modern tape on that. Different custards and chocolates and like interpretations of fruit and yeah. things like that. Dope. Fuck yeah. One of the, the best ones we made uh, that Chef Matt invented uh, was he took a date. He uh, smoked it over jasmine wood and rice and then stuffed it with, uh, with a, a, a miso and it was like a miso brown butter filling and then rolled it in roasted soybean flour. <sighs> And it was just really delicious and like very like umami and sweet and really it was really good and smoky. Yeah. Um, simple things done really well and then also like other we made this one dessert that took like days and days to make mm -hmm. that we don't I don't need to explain but it was like <laughs> very some of it was very complicated intensive too. process yeah for sure cool man um, and then while you were there was there any stars gained yeah we got two Michelin stars first heard, year heard. Um, and then like, I don't know, like two months after I left, uh, you got the three. we got the three. Yeah. That was when Justin was like, time to go, baby. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was amazing. Uh, the reason I left, I mean, to be transparent was <laughs> California was going through a rough time. Yeah. So the opening day of, of single thread was when Trump became elected. Oh, president. really? And so I'll never forget that day. Um, we go in and the restaurant director, uh, at the time, or the uh, Johnny Barr was like trying to rally the troops. Be like, "How are you feeling?" And like, in any other situation, everybody's yeah. like, "Yeah," but everybody was just like, eh. yeah. "Well, he's and, an he's an ex pro wrestler, so he was probably like yeah. cutting promos on you guys." Exactly. <laughs> and 
Chef Kyle's like, we're all just kind of like absorbing this information and just like taking it moment to moment. So like, but that's not the reason I left. Cause yeah, yeah. Of that, but it was weird times for sure. What, what the weirdest time? Weird is not the right word. It's when fire season started. Oh, uh, yeah. And the fires fucked me up. I was like, str- I mean, to the north was Geyserville, which was on fire. To the east was uh, Napa, which was on fire. To the south was Santa Rosa, which was on fire. Yeah, really and, badly. And to the west was the Redwood Forest, which I was like, that's a lot of wood that can go on fire. <laughs> and I was like, in this little town, just, I mean, it sounds like I'm exaggerating, but I was like scared to death. Yeah. It really... Uh, no, it's a, it's scary, dude. Everything, like, you can't see uh, anywhere around you because of the smoke. Oh, my God. And then there's like this red, huge... Just like fire going on, and you're like, "Well, that's pretty close." You know what I mean? It was really scary. Yeah. And after almost, it was like a year and a half that I was at Single Thread, and my goal was to learn to make desserts. I loved the food there, but I wanted to learn how to make, make desserts. desserts yeah. And after a year and a half, I worked basically every station on pastry. I was like, "Okay, I'm certainly not a master of dessert yeah. by any means. Yeah. By any means." Um, but I felt like I had a. I learned what I I, I had. Uh, committed and figured out my goal. Yeah, okay. So, and between that and the fires, it was like, it's time to go. Dope, dope. Okay. But uh, that's an amazing restaurant. And then, uh, that was an interesting, it was like for six months where I was like, like I felt like I was like a hired an assassin. I did like a bunch of different odd jobs. Uh, okay. Uh, I got an opportunity from my friend Jason Fiera to be a private chef in St. Kitts in the Caribbean. Oh, really? So I spent cool. two, I spent like, a few weeks there, which was insane. I mean, like, that was crazy. The island itself, the whole country, you can drive in 18 minutes. It's, like, two lanes, right? Yeah. And, you know, like, I was cooking for this one family, this very wealthy family, and we would get lobsters, these an unbelievable spiny lobsters. Yeah, like, yeah. And the food we were cooking in Napa, like, we were never cooking with, like, guava and mango exactly. and papaya. But that's okay. And, like, and star fruit. Yeah. You know, like, whoever wants to make a dish with star fruit mm-hmm. in Northern California, and now it's like, oh, my God, the... Carambola, baby. That's just delicious. Unbelievable. I mean, we were getting ahi tuna that I had to, like, submerge in ice because it was still... Like, they Warm. weren't handling it. They weren't handling it well. The no, fish they just hit it with a fucking pipe and then yeah, it stays right. on the floor of the boat and, and then they moves back and forth as they... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's yeah, exactly. all like sliding on the ground dead. Just like, <laughs> unbelievable, like, yeah, and the yeah. rum and it was super cool. So I did that and then I was a consultant for this restaurant, this like crazy restaurant that like it, I trained the staff for... I was there for a week. I trained my staff and on the third day, none of the line cooks were there. And I was like, <laughs> and I was like, w- where is everybody to the end? boss? And she's like, they're all in jail. I was like, what the fuck happened? Oh, there was three line cooks. Yeah. Each one was in jail for a different reason. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I was like, this I is... I figured they all went out together. That's what you think, right? Yeah. That's what I thought. I was like, what kind of fight? What kind of crazy thing they got involved yeah. in? No. They all did something crazy. It's like one beat his wife, one... No, like... I'm not saying like that. <laughs> I'm not saying that. I'm just but... throwing examples out. No, no, no. But uh, it was like, whoa, this is fucking wild. I started being a food stylist assistant for a grocery store called Raleigh's in Sacramento. Raleigh's? Raleigh's, yeah, excuse me. Yeah, baby. If you look the at all Knob the... Knob Hill joints. Yeah, yeah. So I was doing f- a food styling assistant. So, like, I would prepare all the mise en place. Like, amaz- like, basically like a line cook. Like, you put all your stuff on the tray and you send it up. That's what I was. I would, like... For, like, pictures? But for pictures. Like, how do you get a piece of grilled chicken to look good for a picture? You know? Put a shit ton of oil on it. Oil, but then you have you don't want to cook it all the way through. No, you don't because it'll look. Yeah. It will always look dried out. Yeah, so it's it needs like to be glistening. Pretty raw. Yeah, just that's like the a, best thing about photo. Well, not the best thing about photo shoots because let's be honest, all photo shoot food goes in the trash. I mean, you know, I'll, I'll challenge you on that. Some of the food that we made, I would eat for sure. Okay, and was good. That's at Rayleigh's. I guess I would say restaurants. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Every single photo shoot I've ever been a part of. Oh yeah, has yeah. been like so wasteful. You totally, know? but this was like. But ultimately, they made it so you could buy the products. Yes. You, and you got it at some point. So um, Christine Walham uh, taught me how to be a f- uh, doing food styling. How to look at it artfully. Yeah, exactly. And so she taught me. And then I, at one point, I was like, uh, I did, um, what do you, I was, got the opportunity to be a model for a flower catalog. Whoa, bro. Like, like but it was. nude or? No, 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 no. <laughs> it was like, uh, I was, I wore a tuxedo just like, 
And it was to showcase the flowers, like boutonnieres, as like a groom. Yeah. So he's next to like this beautiful woman, and we like I it was in a, like such a hot day. It was like 120 yeah. degrees out or something like that. And they took.